Joshua from Boogie Source Healing and Fun. Today I want to talk about teeth. I want to talk about teeth because there's so much out there on children wearing retainers and adult wearing retainers. Children wearing braces and needing braces and adults needing braces. I think I need some braces or something going on here. My nutrition's really off. And we have all these people really just going into it. And if you really look at it, you're treating the symptom of something else going on. At the same time, with so many people struggling with TMJ issues, and we have to look at the TMJ joint. Now I'm going to take my teeth out because I can't talk and you can't understand me. There's so many people struggling with TMJ issues. And you have to look at it to figure out it's way more complex than this than saying, oh, it's just the TMJ. First off, if you say I have TMJ, everyone has TMJ. It's a temporomandibular joint. You have a dysfunction there. Now, of course, this is a YouTube. This is mainly for practitioners or for the person maybe thinking, wow, I have TMJ or teeth issues. Instead of getting braces or retainer or wearing a bite plate or something, getting reconstructive surgery, maybe I can find a skilled osteopath that's trained in manual therapy from out of the States or a skilled biodynamic craniosacral therapist to actually work on me to help with the situation. At the same time, when you look at the TMJ, you, first you have to figure out as a practitioner, is the issue coming from an ascending lesion? Is it actually coming from the foot, the knee, the hip, uh, the, the spine, etc.? Because there's many areas of the body and many different structures, fascia, visceral, bones, ligaments, etc., that can cause ascending dysfunction to the occiput, which drives the temporal, which drives the mandible. Occiput is in conjunction with the sphenoid, which drives the maxilla. So we have to look at this. At the same time, there could be a descending lesion from the cranium, the fascia, the sutures, any of the different cranial vault bones, um, uh, base bones, the sinuses, the dura, etc. So we have to figure that out first because you could have a TMJ issue and it could be from a different area of the body that's actually causing a TMJ issue. And it's not the primary lesion that's actually causing dysfunction. Now, the purpose of this doing this YouTube today is just to give you some light into possibly, you know, what could cause an overbite, what could cause an underbite, what could cause your jaw to shift to the left when you open your jaw, what could cause your jaw to shift to the right when you open your jaw, what's causing my condyle to go posterior, you know, and not allowing me to open my mouth, what's causing my condyle to go anterior and not allowing me to close my mouth, what's causing teeth issues, overbite, underbite, all these different things because, you know, there's different muscles, you have four muscles of mastication. You have four ligaments that restrict movements of the temporomandibular joint, two of them attached to the sphenoid, one to the temporal, one to the styloid process, right to the mandible. You have four infrahyoid muscles and four um, suprahyoid muscles. So you have all these things you need to look at first, then you can look at the joint, the structure, the bone, you can look at the disc, what's going on. Is it compacted? And there's many techniques that can actually help people with this. But first off, like I said, you have to find out, is it a de ascending lesion coming from somewhere else that's causing the TMJ issue? Is it a descending lesion? Is it a trauma? I see most people that have head traumas, cervical traumas, and things like that that end up with TMJ issues. The TMJ is not the primary cause because, as I said, the occiput drives the temporal, which drives the mandible. And the sphenoid drives the mandible. This is your cranium. It's half of your cranium. This is the mandible. This is your sphenoid bone. It's kind of right back here. It looks like a set of wings. These are your temporal bones right on your ear. This is your occipital bone back here. So normally in, in respiration, your occiput and sphenoid, which are sphenoid, occiput, they're kind of like this. And you inhale, and they sort of go like this. And these are micro movements. You inhale, and they both go into cranial flexion. And you exhale, and they both go into cranial extension back to neutral. Now, parts of your body, your spine, you shake them, etc. mirror this movement, and they have a vast connection with parts of those bodies through the dura and other structures. But we're just going to focus on this issue because people that have sacral issues, coccyx issues, can actually develop uh, mandible and maxilla issues or TMJ issues or teeth issues. So if we think about it, as I mentioned, some important things to look at is the occiput drives the temporal, which drives the mandible. So anytime the cranium or the occiput goes into cranial flexion, which is it goes back into mechanical extension, or the sphenoid drives into cranial, what we call cranial flexion, but mechanical flexion, you're going to get the mandible to actually drive backwards. As the temporals are driven by the occiput into external rotation, the mandible gets pushed backwards. So it goes posterior, and it pushes the disc in front of the condyle. Anytime the same movement happens with the sphenoid, and the sphenoid goes into this cranial flexion, like this, or mechanical flexion, 
it drives the maxilla, and it actually pushes the maxilla backwards. So if someone's occiput or their SBS, occiput and sphenoid, are essentially lesioned in a flexion, you're going to get a, a retro um, movement of both mandible and maxilla. And the opposite occurs. If you have an extension, when they go the opposite way to neutral lesion, you're going to get mandible and maxilla to actually go forward. Now let's look at other lesions that could cause dysfunction. The first one is, let's look at what's called a, a, a torsion of the SBS. Okay? This happens along the vertical axis that goes right through the foramen magnum and right anterior to the cella turcica of the sphenoid. And you're going to get a torsion movement. Um, I'm sorry, it's more the AP axis. Rewind that. So it doesn't matter. But the bottom line is you're going to get a torsion. So if you're looking at your sphenoid like this, if the sphenoid drops and goes high on the left side, we get a left torsion. It drops on this side. Same thing with the occiput. The occiput's going to go high on this right side and drop on the left side. So everything on the left side is an external rotation, we call it. The occiput drives the temporal into external rotation. Temporal drives the mandible into external rotation. And it pulls it back. So it pulls your mandible backwards into the joint and pulls the discs forward. Now what's going to happen? Now everything on the right side is an internal rotation, occiput, temporal, and sphenoid. So what happens is it actually pushes the mandible forward on the right, pulls the mandible back on the left. So now you get an anterior lesion on the right. The, con the disc is actually behind the, um, the condyle, it's posterior. And you're going to get the condyle on the mandible side on the left to go backwards and the disc is going to go forward. So now when you open your jaw, you're going to get a shift to the left. That's what's going to cause the shift. Now, is it the mandible? Yes, but the occiput drives the temporal. Temporal drives the mandible. So if you have a right torsion, it's the opposite that occurs. Everything on the right is an inter extra rotation. Everything on the left is an inter rotation. And you're going to get a shift to the right when you open your mouth because the mandible is posterior on the right, disc is anterior. Mandible is anterior on the left, and the disc is posterior. So you're going to get a shift to the right with a left or right torsion lesion of the sphenoid. This can actually be corrected through proper manual therapy, the cranium sutures in these bones, fascia, dura, etc., to fix the torsion lesion within the cranium. If you have any type of, you know, retro movements of the mandible maxilla, same thing. They both get pushed forward. Oh, if you have a shifting, of course you're going to get malocclusion issues, and you typically see these type 3 malocclusion where people's teeth get crowded, you have a shift of the jaw, they can't bite down, they can't open properly, you get a lot of pain. So over time, you can actually fix not only the pain, but the structures, of course, with a lot of work. So you don't need braces and you don't need retainers. Another important lesion that typically happens, it can actually be membranous, it can actually be from coming inside the body, or it can actually be traumatic, which is more severe, usually from getting punched in the head or having a head trauma, is what's called a superior or inferior vertical strain. This is within the SBS as well, sphenoid, occiput. Now, these are micro movements. Now, typically with a superior vertical strain, what happens is the sphenoid goes upward. The basic sphenoid, base of the sphenoid goes up like this. But the occiput actually is going into cranial extension. It's moving this way. So they're moving in the same direction where with occiput and sphenoid, normal movement flexion, they're moving in the opposite direction like this with inspiration. So with this um, superior vertical strain, what happens is the sphenoid kind of goes like this. It actually moves up a little like that. It's micro movements. So it's moving this way. Now your occiput is essentially moving this way. So this is an external rotation. This is an internal rotation. Now, as I said, occiput drives temporal, drives mandible. So if this is an internal rotation, we have a superior vertical strain. The basi sphenoid is high. We, that's what we call it off of. Occiput's an internal rotation drives the temporal into internal rotation, drives the mandible into internal rotation, which pushes the mandible forward. Sphenoid's an external rotation like this, in a sense. It goes forward and down, which drives the maxilla backwards. So you actually get an underbite. So you have this type of you know, thing from the side where the mandible is forward and the maxilla is backward, which of course causes tons of malocclusion issues. Now, of course, with an inferior vertical strain, the opposite happens. The sphenoid goes down like this, basic sphenoid goes down into inter rotation, and the occiput goes up into external rotation. So sphenoid, 
going like this clockwise. Occiput now is going um, this way, okay? Same direction. So typically what happens now, everything in the front sphenoid is an internal rotation. Everything in the back is an external rotation. Occiput drives temporal into external rotation, which drives the mandible backwards. Sphenoid is an internal rotation, which drives the, mand uh, the maxilla forward. So now, I can't do it, you have an overbite, right? So if you're looking at it from the side, I can't do it. But now the maxilla, which is this part, with an inferior vertical strain, is forward. With a superior vertical strain, you get an underbite, superior vertical strain, inferior vertical strain. So, of course, there's a lot more to it, but I just want to bring this to light because you can get a lot of results with the right type of manual therapy to the cranium and other parts of the body using osteopathic techniques of manual therapy, using biodynamic cranial psychotherapy to actually release the muscles, the four muscles of mastication, four ligaments that are attached from the, two from the sphenoid, two from the temporal to the mandible, four infrahyoid, four suprahyoid, as well as working with the hyoid, the dura, other parts of the body to figure out what's going on. Because if you have lesions in flexion or extension, if you have a left torsion or a right torsion, if you have a superior vertical strain or inferior vertical strain in your cranium, and there's, there's so many other issues we're ignoring that could cause TMJ issues, of course, but these are kind of the basics. You can see how this can cause not only a TMJ issue with the joint, the different muscles, the structures, it can cause malocclusion issues needing braces and retainers. Because anytime the mandible goes forward, you have the lateral pterygoid, the lateral fiber, the, I'm sorry, the, the anterior fibers of the tempor temporalis actually pulling it forward. And the opposite's happening on the right side if it's getting pulled back. You have different structures pulling it back, like the posterior fibers of the temporalis and other muscles. So this, the, of course, soft tissue therapy and fascial therapy can actually be do very well. Anytime you're doing TMJ work, you want to work the four muscles of mastication first. Infrahyoid, suprahyoid, you want to work those four different ligaments to create um, fluidity in them because they restrict movement. And you actually want to work the base of the cranium to release the tissues before you even get into the joint and work the, ma the mandible, the sphenoid, the temporals, the occiput, the maxilla, etc. So hopefully I didn't go over your head. Hopefully you understand the YouTube clip. And if you have TMJ issues, give us a call. If not, try to find someone in your area that really knows what they're doing, that can look at the whole body, Find out if it's an ascending issue causing TMJ issues, a descending issue causing TMJ issues, as well as, as well as understanding really how to work on the TMJ by working on the cranium. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out of here.